Welcome back to the Introduction to Organic Chemistry series, Part 4 of 5. In this video, I will be discussing the topics of hybrid orbitals and bond angle geometry. I will also be introducing the concept of molecular orbitals. Before I introduce the concept of hybrid orbitals, let's look one more time at the carbon atom. Carbon has its electrons in the 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2 configuration for a total of six electrons. Of this configuration, the 2s2 and 2p2 represent the valence electrons of carbon. In a Lewis dot diagram, this is shown as two paired electrons and two unpaired electrons. We can also represent this in an orbital diagram showing the 2s orbital and the 2p orbital. The 2s of lower energy fills first with two electrons and the 2p of higher energy gets two unpaired electrons. It appears that carbon in its ground state can only make two bonds. That's one in the first p orbital and one in the second p orbital. The third p orbital is empty and therefore incapable of bonding. So where are the four bonds that carbon is so famous for? To answer this, let's first define degenerate orbital. A degenerate orbital refers to electrons in an orbital that all have the same energy. Looking at the carbon configuration, we notice that the 2s is of a much lower energy than the 2p orbital, and therefore the 2s keeps its two electrons and the 2p orbital is somewhat empty. In order for carbon to make four individual bonds, we first have to take the s orbital and promote it to the same level of the p orbital. Now I have four electrons that are in degenerate orbitals. So the second electron in the 2s orbital no longer needs to be paired and instead will move over to the empty orbital in the 2p position. Now that carbon has four electrons, each with the same energy, it is capable of making four bonds. This hybrid orbital was created by combining 1s and 3p orbitals. Another way to say this is the sp3 hybrid orbital. Carbon's sp3 hybrid orbital is used to make only single or sigma bonds. An example here is methane. You will also see this with longer carbon chains later in the semester. Now let's look at the red carbon in the molecule ethene. Notice that carbon has a single bond to each of the hydrogens and to the other carbon. The double bond in this molecule has one single or sigma bond and one pi bond. Recall that a pi bond is made from a p orbital and not from a hybrid orbital. And we see again two paired electrons in the s orbital and two lone electrons in the p orbital. In order to make this pi bond, we will set aside one of the p orbitals because this will not partake in the hybridization. After setting aside that one p electron for the pi bond, we have an s orbital of lower energy with two electrons, one p orbital with one electron, and one empty p orbital. As before, we will take the s orbital and promote it to the same energy level as the p orbitals, once again giving me degenerate orbitals. And then I will take that one electron from the s orbital and move it over to the p orbital. This new hybridization made from 1s and 2p orbitals gives me the new sp2 hybrid orbital. The sp2 hybrid orbital is now capable of forming three bonds, one at each of its hybrid electrons to give a sigma bond, and then one bond at its p orbital to give a pi bond. Like oxygen and nitrogen are also capable of sp2 hybridization. For example, in this formaldehyde molecule here. So the sp hybrid allows us to do a carbon to carbon triple bond, such in this ethyne molecule here. A carbon to carbon triple bond is made from two pi bonds using two p electrons. In order to make these triple bonds, we have to set aside both p orbitals that have electrons in them. This leaves us with the 2s electrons and the 1p orbital with no electrons in it. As before, we take the s orbital, we promote it to the same level as the p orbital, and then we take one of the electrons and jump it over to the empty orbital. The sp hybrid orbital is now capable of accepting two bonds, one each at its sp hybridized electrons for two sigma bonds, and two additional bonds at its p electrons, which are not hybridized, for its two pi bonds. The two pi bonds typically give me 
a triple bond, but I can also see it formed as two separate double bonds in a molecule like carbon dioxide, where the carbon is sp hybridized using one pi bond to the oxygen on the right and one pi bond to the oxygen on the left. Recognizing hybrid orbitals is only half the battle. Now we have to understand the VESPER theory, which stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion. The valence shell electron pair repulsion theory tells me that even though I have multiple electrons within an atom, the fact is electrons are negative, negatives repel each other, and so the electrons will try to push the other groups as far away from itself as possible. Taking this into account, I am able to figure out the molecular shape and bond angle of specific atoms in molecule. An sp3 hybridized molecule has a total of four groups. The farthest that four groups can get from each other is in a pyramid or tetrahedral shape. The tetrahedral structure is the most difficult to draw because we're trying to envision a 3D triangular pyramid. Imagine you have the carbon atom in the center of this pyramid and each of these points represent a hydrogen atom giving me the CH4 or methane molecule we saw before. In organic chemistry, 3D molecules are represented using dashes and wedges. We'll start with the center carbon and now we'll look at this forward hydrogen which appears to be coming directly at me out of the page. I will represent this with a thick wedge. The two hydrogens at the right and left appear to be going back or into the page and I will represent these by showing dashes that are fading into the page. Finally, we have the hydrogen on top which appears to be directly in my plane of vision or in the page and we represent this with a solid line. This molecule here is the right way to represent a three-dimensional molecule in organic chemistry. Once again, the thick solid wedge is coming out of the page at me the fading dashes are going away from me into the page. The solid line represents an atom that is directly in the plane of the paper. If you make a model of this molecule and then rotate it, you will see that no matter how you turn it, the atoms will always be equidistant from each other and the angle between hydrogen to carbon to hydrogen will always be 109.5 degrees. The sp2 hybridal is a lot simpler to draw given that it only has three groups. Our previous example formaldehyde showed a carbon double bound to an oxygen and single bound to two hydrogens. This sp2 hybridization pushes each of the atom groups away from each other, giving me a flat triangle, also known as a trigonal planar. If we take a circle, which is 360 degrees, and divide this circle into three equal parts, 360 divided by 3 gives me 120 degrees. Therefore, the angle in a trigonal planar molecule gives me approximately 120 degrees. The reason this isn't exactly 120 is notice that the carbon to oxygen bond is a lot more electron rich than the carbon to hydrogen bonds and these will actually push the hydrogens a little bit farther away, giving me an angle that is slightly less than 120 degrees between the two hydrogens that is slightly greater than 120 degrees for the hydrogen to oxygen. The sp hybrid orbital, which has a total of two groups, is by far the easiest to represent. From our previous example, ethyne, we see that the farthest that two groups can get away from each other is in a straight line giving me a linear geometry with a bond angle of 180 degrees. The same applies for a molecule like carbon dioxide, which has its pi bond split over two atoms. Once again, we have a 180 degree angle with a linear geometry. Many students have a lot of trouble memorizing and recognizing bond angle geometry when it comes to complex organic molecules, especially when atoms other than carbon are involved, for example, oxygen and nitrogen. Here are a couple of quick tricks to help you recognize the specific hybridizations in complex molecules. The first tip is to view all lone pair electrons as if they are bonds. This includes the lone pairs on oxygen in a water molecule or the lone pairs on nitrogen in an ammonia molecule. To recognize an sp3, look for double or triple bonds. If there are no double bonds and no triple bonds, you are most likely dealing with an sp3 hybridization. 
The bond angle is 109.5 and your shape is tetrahedral. An sp2 molecule has one pi bond, so we're not going to look at the single bonds or the lone pairs. Simply look, does your molecule have a double bond? It is most likely an sp2. If it's sp2, the bond angle will be 120 degrees and the shape will be trigonal planar. And finally, an sp hybridized molecule will have two pi bonds. These two pi bonds can be in the form of a triple bond or in the form of two separate double bonds like the carbon dioxide example we looked at before. The bond angle for an sp hybridized molecule will be 180 degrees and the shape will be linear. Let's apply this to a few quick examples. On the left we have pentane which is made of carbons and hydrogens. As you see every carbon has single bonds and no double or triple bonds thus every carbon in this molecule is sp3 hybridized. On the right we have butanoic acid. Once again we have a number of carbons with only single bonds so these carbons are all going to be sp3 hybridized. Here we have an oxygen and a carbon both sharing a double bond. Since each of them has one pi bond they are both sp2 hybridized. On the bottom we have an oxygen that has only single bonds and electron pairs. So this falls under the sp3 category. Now let's look at an even more complex example, acetaminophen, the active ingredient in Tylenol. As you can see with this ring over here, I have six carbon atoms, each of which has one pi bond and three sigma bonds. Each of these carbon atoms, therefore, is going to be sp2 hybridized. The oxygen over here only has single bonds, so it's sp3 hybridized. The carbon to the right is sharing a double bond with an oxygen, so they are both sp2 hybridized. The nitrogen only has single bonds and lone pairs, making it sp3. And this carbon down here is sp3, again, because it only has single bonds. Most organic chemistry courses will skip the topic of molecular orbitals in the beginning of the semester. However, if you're not one of those lucky few, then this is for you. We mentioned the concept of a sigma and pi bond previously. Now let's look at it in an energy diagram. The electrons of a ground state hydrogen atom are at a medium energy level. When these two electrons come together to form a sigma bond, the energy significantly decreases because the electrons are a lot more stable in this bonded form. This is the sigma 1s orbital. The sigma 1s orbital is a lot lower in energy than a ground state hydrogen electron. If energy is put into this bond and the electrons get excited, one of the electrons may jump well beyond the ground state energy level. Sigma star can be understood as the sigma antibonding orbital, meaning the hydrogen electron has so much energy it's not interested in forming a stable bond, it would rather go out and explore. An electron doesn't have to stay in the antibonding orbital. If the energy is removed it goes back down into the sigma 1s and once again reforms that sigma bond. The same thing occurs between the electrons in a ground state p orbital. When these p electrons come together to form a pi bond, they go into the pi bonding orbital giving me a much lower and more stable bond. If one of these pi electrons is excited, the electron can jump up into the pi star or antibonding orbital, temporarily breaking the double bond. As before, if the energy is removed, the electron can go back into the pi orbital, once again reforming that bond. Now this concept will be looked at in a lot more detail as you get towards the end of your organic one semester. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to see all five Intro to Orgo videos to ensure that when you start studying organic chemistry, you have a thorough understanding of the chemistry required to be able to ace the material. If you have any questions, I will be happy to help you with them. Simply post your questions in the comments below or send me an email and I will respond as soon as I can. Email your questions to tutorials at leahforsci.com. You can find additional study information and more tutorials on my website at www.leah, spelled L-E-A-H, the number four, S-C-I, dot com.